On the eve of the state election, both sides of politics are still campaigning hard. The latest opinion poll is tipping the coalition to win, although most analysts say Labor will scrape over the line for a fourth term. The ALP has spent the day trying to discredit the coalition's costings, saying there's no money for big promises over the next four years. But as Josie Taylor reports, that also applies to some of Labor's policies. Campaigning in a lock factory that's a very precise business. presents endless political metaphors. Well, that's the final assembly there. That's good. John Brumby was in Victoria's most marginal seat, then flew to the regions, making a quick stop at his former school. Yes, really good. Gee, that's fancy. Yeah. Hello. Meantime, Ted Bailey was doing his best not to scare small children at Patterson Lakes. The swing is on. That's a swing of six and a half percent that the coalition needs to win government. I, I can do this to the books if you want. In the last hours of campaigning, both sides agree on one thing. This election is really about a clear choice. And there's a very clear choice for Victorians tomorrow. Ted Bailey fought off a heckler who had some suspiciously Labor sounding lines. No money for the promises you funded. Six million dollars for cleaning Mordialic Creek, but it ain't there. It's more of the same rubbish. Labor says the coalition hasn't allocated money in the next four years for some big hospital projects. They need to be elected tomorrow, re-elected in four years and then re-elected again in 2018 before they would deliver on these promises. Indeed, the government have actually scheduled much of their uh, infrastructure funding in hospitals over two terms. John Brumby denies Labor's done exactly the same thing, although there's no funding for his promised anti-corruption commission in the next four years. That would be a matter for future budgets. Without Liberal preferences, the Greens may not be the force they were hoping to be, but they're still confident. I'm, I'm very hopeful that we'll get extra Greens in the Parliament. Certainly our vote's up. Both major parties don't want to talk about the prospect of a minority government. Win, lose or draw, Ted Bailey's adamant he's staying on in Parliament. Why yes. Whether the voters say N-O to his leadership or to John Brumby's is now everyone's call. And our state political reporter Josie Taylor joins me now from Parliament House. So Josie, who's going to win? Well, Tam, the latest opinion poll actually suggests that Ted Bailey could be Premier on Sunday. It's a Roy Morgan poll of only 1,000 voters, but it shows the coalition edging just ahead of Labor on the two-party preferred vote, 51 to 49. But that does go against the vast majority of most recent polls and the views of most analysts. They suggest that Labor will win with a reduced majority. But we might not have a quick result. About 500,000 Victorians have already placed their vote. The Electoral Commission says those votes won't be counted until Monday. And with so many marginal seats hanging in the balance in this election, those early votes could make all the difference. And Josie, based on your observations of the campaigns, who do you think deserves to win? Well, Labor promised us a positive campaign and they certainly didn't deliver on that, but they did deliver an effective campaign. They attacked Ted Bailey with negative television ads that really rattled the opposition leader. He ended up suing the ALP for defamation over them. That, in effect, actually just gave Labor's attack more oxygen and actually derailed the opposition leader's campaign for at least a few days. Labor, on the other hand, ran a slick campaign. They maximised their pitcher opportunities. They enlisted celebrities and children for Brumby's so-called boot camp. But at the end of the day, it all boils down to whether Victorians will judge John Brumby on just a few weeks of an election campaign or on his government's track record, which is now 11 years old. So we'll find out soon, Tam, for the moment. It's back to you. Thanks, Josie. That's our state political reporter, Josie Taylor, at Parliament House.